beavers were once throughout Europe, they were very, very common species. They were hunted to extinction. In Britain, the last beavers, I think, were in about the 15th, 16th century. So they were hunted because of their very heavy, warm fur and for their castoreum, which was used as like a painkiller. Now, in these more enlightened times, we're realising that actually beavers have huge value as living, breathing animals. And we need to get a lot better at working with nature in terms of helping to solve some of our man-made issues. The last major floods in Lidbrook were in 2012. 10 properties and businesses flooded with huge amounts of damage. So we were always being asked, what can we do as Forestry England, as a landowner here, to help solve that problem of flooding? Before the beavers came to this site, this was basically a highly modified stream within the Forest of Dean. It had been channelled, it had been influenced by man due to all the industries down in Lidbrook. So the water effectively landed in the brook, rushed down. It wasn't particularly rich in biodiversity. It wasn't doing much in terms of holding up the water. Beavers do not like the sound of running water. They have this innate behaviour to build dams. I tend to come down on a weekly basis, either early in the morning or later on in the evening, when it's really quiet. It's a really dynamic, interesting, surprising sight. You never quite know what you're going to find. The beavers are pretty much active from about 10 o'clock at night through to sort of early mornings. All day they'll be tucked up in their burrows, safe from predators. And then at night time they come out, they feed, they fell trees, they create these dams. Here we can see where the beavers have basically created these trails. And we've got a, a trail camera here. We've got a lot of these situated all around the site. And they're brilliant for just giving us a little bit of an insight into the lives of the beavers. The footage is really interesting because every five, ten minutes or so, you'll get another image of, of one of the beavers dragging various vegetation, dock leaves and brambles and nettles, busily creating their habitat. So they're trying to create really deep water so they can burrow into the banks on the side of the stream, somewhere safe to breed, effectively. They'll use sticks and twigs and fell trees to create these really complicated dams. They'll pack them with mud, which holds up most of the water. But as you can hear, they're allowing water to very gently flow through the site. And that's fantastic because in really dry periods such as this, they're conserving water, they're holding it up slowing the flow, preventing that very sudden force of water going down into communities such as Lidbrook and, and actually flooding it. The beavers have felled this willow tree here. They've felled it at the base. They normally fell over the water, but you can see here how they haven't actually killed the tree. They want them to stay alive, they want them to regenerate. And you can see here all this new growth. And that is exactly what the beavers need because they want to set up home here. They want this to provide them with the resources they need through the winter. You're getting this lovely complex mosaic of habitats where you've got some dead wood, some felled wood, some wood that will be submerged in the water. And all of this creates space for birds to nest and for invertebrates to feed. They are selfish animals like we all are creating their nice living space. By doing that, they are unwittingly creating habitat for a huge variety of other species. So the burrows will be used by otters when they're not used anymore. So we've got footage of multiple bird species and mice and small mammals feeding on the invertebrates in the dams. Everything they do creates space for other wildlife to live in this sort of messy, dynamic, interesting, complex habitat, which we don't see very much now. We're all too tidy. And this is something that we try to emulate. We work with contractors and we work with teams of volunteers to do exactly this sort of work, to, to fell trees, to create open conditions to increase the biodiversity of, of the Forest of Dean. But here we've got two animals doing it for free.